the mm -hmm. number one reason that people fall off of diets is they get hungry. Yeah. And that's what causes them to, to revert to their old eating habits. And uh, willpower is not a good strategy to combat that. Uh, trying to white knuckle hunger is a bad idea. And as we know from recidivism, from people's weight regain and long, lack of long-term uh, weight loss uh, adherence, uh, it's not a very effective method just to uh, <clears throat> kind of try and eat less and move more, which is, uh, I like to say, it's, it's uh, truthful but not useful. And <clears throat> so what we like to do is uh, work on people's satiety and kind of get in front of it meaning sub, get in front of the subconscious or get ahead of the hunger signals. And we don't have a lot of tools in our toolbox, unfortunately, for that. Um, but there are definitely some things that you can do to reduce hunger. Uh, first and foremost, of course, is eating more whole foods. They just provide a better satiety benefit. If you had to put your finger on the number one cause or, or probably the cause for uh, the excess weight uh, that, that we were experiencing as a, as a society, it's really overconsumption. It's really we're eating too much. And the main source of those calories is uh, highly palatable, ultra-processed foods. That's your fast foods and your, your, um, your processed foods. We look at, at research and it suggests that we tend to overeat those by as much as 500 calories a day, simply because mm -hmm. they're so palatable and easy to overconsume and they don't provide any satiety benefit. Obviously, sleeping more is a huge component because then you get the hormonal release for ghrelin that, uh, uh, that causes hunger. You get insulin resistance. Uh, you um, start burning more f muscle than fat, uh, even when you lose weight with uh, lack of sleep. Uh, so those are all good strategies. To, you know, getting more sleep is an important strategy. If you're only sleeping five or six hours a night, then you're up 18, 19 hours a day. And mm -hmm. just by virtue of the time that you're awake, you're going to uh, have a greater opportunity to get hungry again and add an extra mm -hmm. meal. So mm -hmm. I strongly suggest that to, you get that eight hours if you can. I know that's hard with busy professionals and the like, but what I found is, is that a lot of people uh, will uh, probably have the capacity or the ability to go to bed a little earlier, but they end up watching TV late or yep. start scrolling through social media and they get distracted. So that's just, that really is a disciplinary uh, issue that, that should be managed. Uh, getting more protein in the diet particularly for women. They tend not to get enough protein. It's very satiating. It has a high thermic effect of food, which just means that uh, it, it burns calories to digest it. So for every 100 calories of protein that you eat, you only net out about 70 uh, <clears throat> because it, it costs 30 calories just to break it down and digest it. Higher fiber, obviously, is associated with more satiety. And then there's high satiety foods. Uh, there's an index that people rate how full they've felt after eating particular foods and things like boiled potatoes and oranges. Uh, again, whole foods, low sugar, vegetable or fruits, uh, like I mean, oranges, berries, mm -hmm. uh, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, they're high in fiber, high in water, they tend to satiate you. Well, drinking more water mm -hmm. uh, before meals in particular and, and during meals uh, can help satiate you. Basically, we're just trying to give folks tips and tricks that they can help utilize to prevent them from getting hungry or losing energy because then they'll just they'll overeat. We, uh, we try and get them to take their, their snacks out of the house, the, the, those, uh, those things that they tend to eat at night and eat too yeah. much of, yep. and uh, replace them with something that's lower calorie, uh, popcorn, maybe a, a beef jerky or something, or fat-free Greek yogurt with blueberries. Uh, we're trying to give them lots of tips and tricks so they can they can navigate this process without having to white knuckle it and be super super hungry. Uh, and then beyond that, of course, um, uh, one thing I was trying to recall earlier was meal prepping. Mm. That's the number one behavior that uh, that will create uh, success and compliance with your diet. And we see that very commonly in the bodybuilding figure physique bikini industry. Those people tote around their six pack bags and their plastic Tupperware. And mm -hmm. As funny as it is, it works and it works. In study after study, uh, that seems to be the uh, the behavior that is the most successful. So I encourage everybody just to to start meal prepping, and then you don't have um, you have what you need when you need it. You don't have to get super hungry and then run off to a fast food place. I used to carry around food in my book bag in college, and I still you know I travel I travel all over the world. I've been in twelve countries and all fifty states in the last mm -hmm. four years, and. Um, done over 200 seminars and I take my meals with me everywhere I go. I don't have to eat at airports or room service or fast food. 
I've got everything I need, whether I'm rolling a Coleman cooler with 30 meals because I'm gone for five days or I'm just stuffing, you know, 10 frozen meals in my gear in my uh, check bag Mm -hmm. and uh, and going somewhere and staying at a place with a microwave. And I use this thermos a lot, this little 24 ounce thermos off of Amazon. It's twenty dollars. And I'll get up in the morning and I'll make breakfast for myself and the kids, but I'll make a lot of extra food of the the sort that I that I'm going to eat during the day. And then I'll portion that out and I'll put it into these little thermos where it stays hot for 12 hours. And I can put uh, a couple of those in my backpack and go about my day and I'm, I'm good. And I, 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 this is very popular amongst police, fire and ambulance, uh, uh, amongst, say, nurses and doctors, uh, even, say, uh, a soccer mom that's a real estate agent working out of the trunk of her car and has to drop her kids off at school, go to work all day, pick them up, take them to an event after school. Uh, that might otherwise be interrupted with uh, a variety of visits to fast food places or the kinds of stuff you find at the office, you know, the donuts and, and that kind of garbage. And so if you've got your meals and they're nice and warm for you and they're in a convenient thermos, how we send our kids to school with those all the time. Why, why wouldn't we do it for ourselves? <laughs> yeah. And so that's been a very, very effective method, probably the most effective that people are. I have to say it's kind of life changing. And I, I don't say that about very much in this industry, but when you're. When you plan ahead and you've got something that's what you need when you need it and it's right there nice and convenient, your, your compliance uh, greatly improves. And the vast majority of people regain a significant amount of the weight. And, and, and I hate using that term, 95% of diets fail, because there's, the research on that is, is, is questionable. Uh, but even Lane Norton will tell you within you know, one year, 50%, within mm-hmm. two years, 70%, within three years, you know, well north of that, 80, 90%. Uh, of people tend to gain back some or all of the weight, and there are unfortunately those who uh, over restrict and and um, and gain back more than what they lost, and that's really unfortunate. Uh, that's going to be you know binging behavior from uh, from demonizing foods. We commonly see that, and uh, losing a lot of muscle and then gaining back a lot of fat, and over time actually changing your body composition for the worse. So your basic yeah. metabolic rate slows down, which is tragic. And so sometimes when someone comes to me and they've had trouble losing weight. Uh, I have to focus on building muscle first because they, they, they really don't have the composition that, that would be successful in a weight loss. The calories would be too little uh, and it wouldn't be sustainable. So I said, let's eat more protein, get more sleep, take 10 minute walks and let's lift some weights and get strong. Mm-hmm. And then when you're able to uh, consume enough calories such that we have something to work with where we can restrict, uh, then we can look at, at some weight loss and, and, and then it's a little healthier because they're not as, as hungry. Mm-hmm. And so that goes back to the beginning of the conversation. How do I get people to adhere to a diet? And again, it's not willpower. You don't white knuckle it. You use all the strategies that, that we mentioned that are in the book uh, to work on satiety and, and uh, energy, get more sleep uh, and try and stay in front of that hunger 